Thank you guys so much for supporting the Bomars and buying yourself a bottle of the Secret Scrape by Bomar Scents. You know, this is huge for me and it's a big project I've been working on for a couple years. So your support means a ton to me and it definitely means a lot to my grandpa, which is where the Secret Scrape got its name, was from using my grandpa Bomar's secret ingredient, which is Ah, just kidding. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you guys. It's a family secret. And a part of the proceeds from this bottle actually goes and supports my grandma and grandpa. So they're super happy about your support too. So this entire video is going to be how to get the most out of each and every bottle. You know, your guys' money is valuable and I don't want you to waste it and I don't want you to waste the product. So there's a lot of mistakes people make when it comes to making scrapes. I'm going to go through how to make a great scrape, all the do's and don'ts of scrapes and using this scent. Let's dive in. So the number one rule with scrapes is obviously location. If you put a scrape in the middle of the desert, no matter how good the scent is, you're not gonna get a deer on camera. So location is key. So let's dive into some key points with location and where to put a scrape and what to look for. So let's talk locations. The best place to put a scrape is obviously where the deer are frequenting. So for example, you look behind me here, we got ourselves a big food plot that's came in nice. This is going to be a place where deer are gonna come often. So it's a great place to put a scrape, which is exactly why I picked this location behind me to put a scrape. So. If you're looking for a spot to put a scrape, food sources are great. So if you got maybe a bean field, a food plot, a corn field, whatever you have access to, no matter where you are in the state or country that is, you can put a scrape in one of those food sources and it works great. Other than food sources, other great locations would be water sources, you know, bedding areas, uh, transition areas like ridges or just heavy used trails in the timber. All of those make for great places to put a scrape. So this definitely will take a little bit of woodsmanship, you know, figuring out where the deer are traveling and be able to put scrapes in those locations to be able to amplify your results. The scrape isn't going to pull deer from hundreds of yards. It's going to get a deer that's passing by instead of walking maybe behind your camera, it'll come and check out the scrape and you'll get a picture of them, which we all know the first rule for killing a big buck is finding a big buck. So if you get a new deer move in on your farm, having a scrape like this is going to be critical for him to come check it out. At least you know he's there. So obviously scrapes are important. So let's dive into how to make a scrape and how to do it properly so you get the most results from the mock scrape you're going to create using the Bomar Sense. So the odds of you finding a perfect limb that is exactly the perfect distance off the ground in the perfect location is next to impossible. So you're gonna have to customize that branch and make it to where it is perfect for the deer. Because listen, these deer only have so much scent that they can spread around. A buck isn't gonna go around to 15 different scrapes and rub them all the same and give them all the level of intensity. That, that they normally would on maybe the best location. You think about it, it's like a buck only has so much attention that it's willing to give to a certain location. Kind of like a guy is trying to pick up chicks at the bar. He can't spend all of his time at all the bars. He's gonna have to pick some areas in order for that to work. So the bar that produces the most chicks is gonna be the place that he wants to spend most of his time. And in a deer's world, that's gonna be the place where he wants to leave most of his scent. So we gotta create those spots that make it so optimum for all the deer to use, he's gonna get the most results from it. Cause let's be, let's be honest with each other. We want big dominant bucks to use our scrapes. We're all after the oldest, most mature deer even if you're not a size guy, like even if you only just want to shoot a deer, you're still going to want to shoot the most mature deer. So we're going to make scrapes that target the most mature bucks. Let's do it. So before you go squirting this all over the branch, you got to get this branch at the right height. And this is actually a great place to do this. And you're like, well, Josh, a deer can't reach up there. I know we're going to go over how do you get this to optimize the right height. But before we pick a branch, I want to show you guys something that'll take your, your scouting to a new level. And that is going to be how you position this scrape in relation to whatever food source or water source or trail that you're trying to kind of optimize where, why you're putting that scrape there. So what I mean by optimize, I mean by like camera location and getting the most from one camera. So I'm gonna dive into this. Let's say I put a camera right here. You can see actually, we'll just use this GoPro and pretend it's a trail camera. Well, a lot of guys don't think of it like in a sense where I'm gonna put this camera here just so I get the scrape. Yeah, that's great. 
But what if a deer doesn't feel like leaving his scent in the scrape and he walks behind the camera? Well, you'll still get him on trail camera if the camera's positioned correctly. So what I wanna do is kind of go over this and why I picked this location. So we're gonna make this scrape here. And before I do that, I wanna show you guys why I'm positioning it here. So we'll have the camera on this tree here. So we'll get the scrape. That's reason number one to get a deer on camera. Now, if you actually look, we got the food plot behind us. Reason number two, I might get the buck on camera, but there's also a big trail you can see that enters the food plot. And that's a good fence all the way there. So there's actually a fence gap. So that camera will reach and get that. And that's reason number three. But the food plot also makes a turn. So if a deer is feeding in here and he's wanting to walk around, he's gonna need to walk in front of the camera. So this camera location in relation to this scrape is gonna be amazing in getting big mature deer or any deer on camera for that matter. So you wanna optimize your cameras. Otherwise for me to be able to cover this food plot, I need three or four or five cameras to be able to cover every inch. That's just not ideal. And none of us have that kind of money where we just run six cameras for every food plot. So remember, the first rule with killing a big buck is finding a big buck. So you gotta find them. And this is a great way to do that. And then obviously this is just some woodsmanship that you guys are gonna have to learn if you don't know, but finding these kind of locations, optimizing cameras to where you get the most from each one is gonna increase your odds. And uh, I hope you guys find that helpful and you really take it seriously because it really does make a difference. Okay, so how do we transform this in to be the most epic scrape in the woods? Well, let's do it. Step number one, you're gonna need a Fly Fiesta bucket. Sponsored by Fly Fiesta. No, I'm just kidding. This is just regular old five gallon bucket. Yeah, I call it my scrape bucket. So next up, you're gonna need a saw. Super lame flip. So just having fun with you guys, but you are gonna need a saw. You're gonna need zip strips. You're gonna need clippers. There's a little bit of a process with this and uh, it's, I'm having fun with you guys, but these are things you're gonna need. And here, here we go. So first up, you're gonna need more branches. So when you look at this, this is a good location of this, but you can see it's too high. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop some other oak branches and I'm gonna zip tie them on here until it's, it's way down or bushy or whatever at the perfect location in the perfect height. So the goal height here is gonna be about waist high to belly button high. It's gonna feel really low when you make this scrape, but deer are just not that tall. A deer on average stands about three to three and a half feet tall and their head will get up to about four feet tall. So it's really not that high. A lot of guys will just do it here and then the deer have to get up on their hind legs and work it. They're just not gonna do that and they're not gonna like it um, as great as if you just made it the right height. So. There's ways of doing this and we're gonna go through. So I'm gonna take some other branches, saw these down. So picking your branch, I love oaks. It's just really a slam dunk version, but something else that's actually really good is a grapevine. Now these grapevines are actually really incredible. They work really well. So I'll probably put this up in here, but if you're strapped for time, zip tie in one of these bad boys or honestly even better use rope and just put that here it'll get the job done. So grapevines are easy. I know some of you guys don't have access to that, but a grapevine and a branch, they'll crush it. But I like to do a little bit of both because for me, I want a branch and a grapevine if I have time. This spot's really good, so I'm gonna take the time and do that. So when you're picking which branch to chop, a place where a buck could make another scrape is a great place to do it. You're kind of eliminating your competition. So this branch will be perfect. So I'm just gonna come back here and saw this off. And then we're gonna grab this guy, come over here, put the saw down. I got my zip strips here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wanna extend this out here a little bit further. And a key with a good scrape, now remember this, this is actually really important. You are going to want a branch that goes vertical. Most branches don't have this. This one has a good crook in it, that's freaking perfect. Um, but if it doesn't, if it's a live branch, you can actually break it half and then have it pointing down. That works as well. They will protect it. They won't rip it off. Um, they could, but they usually don't. So this scenario here, I'm gonna grab this and I'm just gonna start zip tying this in. 
and, uh, and, this, and then see where we are with height. And then I'll show you how to adjust the height and uh, it's pretty cool. So time to zip strip. I love using zip strips. They don't leave any like long-term scent or anything like that. And so one zip strip will not do the trick. So, cause the branch will spin and rotate on you. So you're gonna wanna zip tie it on a few different places that keep it from rotating. So I'm just gonna be zip tying this like this, and definitely out at the back. Cause right now there's, there's obviously no wind or anything like that, but you gotta think over the course of season, I mean, there's gonna be freaking wind and all kinds of crazy stuff that's gonna be coming, coming here. So yeah, there we go. All right, so I'm just gonna put one more here. Okay, so you're like, now you can see that this branch is actually a little too low. So you want it about three and a half to four feet off the ground. So I, I find about, so right here is three feet, okay? This is four feet. So right in between three and a half to four feet. So you can see that this branch is a little too low. So if it, if I could chop this off, but that's a terrible idea. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. Lots of zip strips. So now you look at other supporting branches, for example, and all you gotta do is pull this branch over and then pull it up to the right height and then zip tie it. So let's see here. Let's just find a supporting branch. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm gonna zip tie this in. All right, so there you go. So I just pulled that up and we pull out the old tape measure and it's gonna be right about the right height. It's still like a, a tick too low, but yeah, we're, no, it's pretty good. We're at about three and a half feet. So that's, that's awesome. Now, say I needed to move the branch over one way or the other. You can take, and for example, take a branch like this, zip tie it to here, and then now this scrapes over here. So just by using zip strips and everything else, you can optimize the location that makes most sense for you. And I'm just gonna zip strip, or zip tie this over here, just like that. So there you can see, I just moved this scrape a few feet, which can make all the difference. So now, when I run this camera right here, I'm gonna be able to see on the left side of the camera, I'm gonna see the whole food plot. On the middle to right side is gonna be the scrape, and I just covered a whole lot more. So again, I know you guys have already bought the secret scrape, and I just hope you appreciate these little tips like this because that I want you to get the most from this and kill big bucks, because that's like my favorite thing in the whole world. Why I do all of this is to get those DMs, those messages, and say your product worked, your tip helped, I just killed the biggest buck in my life, or it just improved my success, I just killed another big one. Like any of those type of DMs and messages, I freaking love, so make sure to send them. But again, that's why I'm taking all this time, because I want you guys to get the most from this. And, uh, and it just gets me fired up. So let's finish this scrape up. And there's not a whole lot left, honestly. So we're, we're looking pretty good here. So now we got the scrape, but now you can kind of see this is getting a little high. Okay, so let's, um, it's still pretty good, but the bit, you gotta think, you're not doing this for the big giant bucks. You gotta do it for the does, the fawns, all the deer, because if the does don't use this because it's too high, well, big buck's not gonna do it because that's the whole point of the scrapes is they leave by their glandular sense to communicate with the herd, not themselves and just other bucks. They're, this is their form of communication. Like you and I have speech that we understand from each other. Deer have glandular sense that let them know their sex, their age, where they've been, where they're going. They have interdigital glands, forehead glands, preorbital glands, you know, vaginal glands, anal glands. I mean, they have all kinds of glands and a lot of animals communicate with their glands. I mean, you think about a deer, for example, or a dog, what's a dog do whenever it goes up to a new dog? It starts sniffing its butt. Well, it's not, it's sniffing for those glandular scents that that dog leaves behind. It's kind of like their driver's license. So we got to make sure, I say all that, to make sure you make this scrape for all the deer, not just the big bucks. So right here, we're going to look at this and look at the height. 
So it's getting up towards that four feet. This is gonna be pretty good. The does that hit this, it'll be kind of a stretch for them, but I think we're gonna be okay. But if I needed to weigh this branch down, all you gotta do is chop a section of branch on, zip tie it here, and it weighs it down. So I err on the side of it being a little bit high versus a little bit low, just because over time this branch might, might come down. Okay, so a lot of people don't know this, but the type of tree you choose is actually really important. Deer do not like making scrapes under walnut trees. And I got a big old walnut tree right here. And a lot of people will make this mistake because walnuts typically have amazing low hanging limbs like this that are just perfect height for deer. And so they'll go under there, they'll kick all the dirt, and then they have no idea why they don't get a picture of a deer. Well, you think about walnuts, they stain, they stink, and these deer are, are trying to rub their preorbital glands and all their scents on there, and they don't wanna put that all over their own glands. And so walnut trees are a big no-no. Now, let's say the only place you have is an actual walnut tree. I'll show you guys real quick on how you can actually still use that tree, but get great results. So if your only option is a walnut tree, do not use the walnut branches as the thing to make your scrape. Get yourself a grapevine, just take and notch yourself with a saw on both sides. That way, obviously it won't slip out. And then put yourself a grapevine up into this thing, or chop these off like this, and then zip tie, like I showed you over there, an oak limb that comes way out, and it'll work just the same. But they do not like using walnuts uh, for scrape limbs. Now, is, is it a rule that a deer will never use it? Of course, there's always exceptions, but exceptions don't make the rules. So again, if you wanna increase your success, do not use a walnut tree as your scrape tree. Unless, of course, you're hanging a grapevine or you're putting a limb like an oak or willow or something off of it. So there you go, back to the other scrape. So now that you've got your branch in the perfect location, it's at the perfect height of three and a half to four feet. You've got everything going, now what do you do? Well, now it's time to disrupt the ground. But more importantly, I wanna dive into one more layer deep. So this branch comes way off the base of the tree. So this comes off this tree really nice. So a deer can walk 360 degrees around this and not run, run into anything. That is awesome for big bucks. They don't want stuff touching them or brush piles close or down logs. They like to be able to walk all the way around it. That's a key point. You know, not every scenario allows you to do that, but if you can get that branch far away out from the edge of the, the weeds or whatever, it's gonna do a lot better. And so, if you're like on the edge, like over here, for example, it's right on the edge of this food plot. We got an overhanging limb, a branch hanging down. Most people would think this is a great place for a scrape. Well, it's not. And the reason is, is because it's right on the edge of this cover. So a deer, if he comes in from this way, he's gonna have all this stuff touching him. I mean, do you guys like stuff touching you? Like when you don't want it to? Or these um, burrs getting on you? No, a deer doesn't like it either. So if your spot is something like this, you're gonna wanna take a weed eater, a bushwhacker, a machete, and then make sure it is clear. You wanna clear all of that brush and everything out so then you've got a nice place for a deer to be able to do a complete 360 and work this scrape. And again, that's key. Key number two, you want flat surfaces too. Like here you can see it's kind of roughed up. Like this is not gonna be that great either. You would have to make this spot nice and flat. In my book of rating great places for scrapes, this would be like a two. I mean, this is bad. I'm not putting a scrape here. Again, you gotta think deer only have so much scent that they can spread, so much time that they can do. They're pretty efficient creatures. They're not gonna be going around all day long just hitting every scrape that they see. So they're gonna spend most of their time in the best places. And this is not that spot. They would 100% rather hit the scrape that we're making down there. So let's go back over there and go in to the rest of the steps of making a perfect mock scrape. 
So personally, I make well over 150 scrapes a year. So I got myself an electric weed eater just because it makes life so much easier. But a rake or anything like that would help, especially if you got thick vegetation where you're gonna be making the scrape. This spot's already kind of like bare just from the fire that we did through here. So it'll clear out pretty fast. But even something like this, I still like to run this. And so you're gonna to wanna to make like a three and a half to four foot circle under your scrape, which is kind of big. So let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna fire up this weed eater. Oh yeah. Pause, always wear eye protection. So I'm gonna do this with my eyes closed. Okay, so another tip, this is actually a really important part. A lot of guys spend all their efforts on the branch, which is very, very important, but this part is very important too, because this soil is gonna be a very fresh smelling. It's a big eyesore, because there's billions of branches everywhere, but this is gonna be like, wow, what's going on over there? So the deer are gonna wanna come check this out. So one thing you don't wanna have is a bunch of piles of stuff, which that's why I kind of expanded on this a little bit. And, and once you get this nice bare dirt, you're gonna take off all the woody vegetation, um, which is like this stuff here. And so I got clippers. So you wanna get as much of this woody vegetation out of there. So, so yeah, that's good. Now, next up, when you're making a scrape, you're gonna wanna get that soil nice and loose. So a rake works really well. Um, your foot, you know, you can do this. You just don't want that hard soil. The soil's gotta be soft enough for when a deer presses its foot into the ground, it can get to its inner digital gland, which is why if you've ever watched a buck make a fresh scrape, they'll tear it all up, they'll blat it, and they'll take one hoof print and go, Poof, and they'll push it right in the middle of the scrape. And the reason is, is that's part of their ID, is that interdigital gland. They're gonna press that into the ground. If it's rock hard ground, then it's not gonna get to a point to where it can actually get to where that gland is in between their hooves. So you wanna make sure there's nice loose dirt. So what I like to use is just a regular old rake. Okay, so I'm gonna rake all this. You wanna get all the debris out, and make it nice loose soil like this. I mean, this ground's good and moist. Nice fresh dirt. And again, I'm, I'm going back into it because I want the dirt to stay in there, but I want to get all the debris out. So I'm just kind of going back and forth until I just have just the debris left. And then that's out. All right, so we got ourselves a perfect scrape. There we go. Okay, so we just finished making the perfect mock scrape. We got the height at three and a half to four feet off the ground. We got a four foot by three and a half foot circle underneath. We got fresh loose dirt, all the debris removed. Everything is in a perfect location to maximize, you know, getting a big buck on camera. There's only one thing left to do, and that's putting in the product that you bought, which is the secret scrape by Bomar Sense. So, before you go squirting it all over the branch, you wanna make sure whatever you're gonna do in the bottom of the scrape is done first. So if you have urine or something else that you're gonna put in the bottom of the scrape or pee yourself, personally, I just drink a lot of water and pee in the bottom of the scrape, that's totally okay. Moisture in the scrape is good. You wanna do whatever you're going to do to the bottom of the scrape first. And the reason is, is because when you start squirting this on the branches, the rest of the, the liquid from the scent is going to drip into the scrape. So say you drip this into the scrape, you have all this valuable gold dripping into the scrape and then you pee on it and you rake it and do all that stuff. Well, you're wasting money and it's not gonna be as efficient. So again, do whatever you're gonna do in the bottom of the scrape first and then do the secret scrape in the branches. So let's dive into what you can do actually in the bottom of the scrape. So moisture is key. In the summertime, like it is now, or maybe you're watching this and it's already fall, if it's been dry, 
the, the, the soil is not gonna hold scent for very long. So if you can moisten that ground up, it'll hold scent a lot better. I learned this way back in middle school and even high school. That's actually how I made money in high school was coon hunting. And I learned a lot about scent coon hunting with my coon dogs. You know, right after a rain, the dog always ran the best tracks or even during the rain, the dog would run the best tracks. If it's a long, dry summer, he just didn't hold a track as well as it did when it was raining. And the reason is, is because of moisture. The moisture holds the scent better to an extent. Obviously, torrential downpour washes away the scent. However, the goal is to have moisture in the scrape so then you can hold the scent longer because you want this to work for five, six, seven days. And if it's super dry, that scent may only last a couple of days. And so it'll obviously stay up here, but you're going to want it to last down there. And so again, moisten the scrape, maybe with your own urine, totally fine after 20 minutes, the human odor's gone anyways. Or what else I like to do is I bring a little bit of water. So this is just regular old water. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of pour just a little bit in the bottom of the scrape there, like that. And then I'll take my rake and I'll just kind of rake it around a little bit, just like this. I don't just pour and leave because otherwise it just kind of turns hard after it dries. So there, we got a lot of little moisture there and now it's time to add in the secret scrape. And you don't need a lot of this. So one bottle will do about, it's so hard to say because each spot's a little bit different, but I would say five to 10 scrapes, which is pretty awesome. It just depends. So the bottle comes with a nice little dripper cap like this. So the vertical branches and leads are gonna be where you want to focus your efforts. So when you drip this on here, you just kind of start up high and just start dripping. Put it on the leaves, little drips here, little drips there, but you can start to see with all the liquid falling into the scrape, why it's important to do everything down low first. And so get the stems, and it looks like I'm using a lot, but I'm really not. And be generous here. That's, that's gonna be plenty. And, and again, I didn't use that much. So a question you're all probably wondering, how often should you reapply the secret scrape? The answer is a half a bottle twice a day, every day for six months. I'm just kidding. So <laughs> the goal of this is to actually just put it on the, the branch and get the deer using it. Once the deer are using it, they're rubbing their salivary glands on it, their forehead glands, their preorbital glands, they're leaving behind their own scent, making this a communal location for deer, and you don't need to use any more scent. Now say it's summertime and the neighbors got beans and you have corn, and you come out here and you make your scrape and there's no bucks coming by. And say it's been seven days and you got some does, next thing you know, the beans are turning, the bucks are moving in, you're gonna wanna come back and and freshen up your scrape, that way the deer start using it again. So it just depends. If you're not having much luck, definitely come back maybe once a week until you're getting luck or maybe your location sucks. <laughs> harsh truth. So maybe switch spots, but the scent works. As you guys can see, the tremendous success we're having online with the secret scrape, it'll work for you too. So either change locations or keep trying every seven days until the deer move into your spot. Anyway, let's keep going. And I know a lot of you are thinking, how are you not wearing rubber gloves and rubber boots? Like what's wrong with you? Well, when it comes to making scrapes, I found, especially during the summer months and before season really starts, the deer just don't really care. I mean, it's impossible to make my presence not known here. They're gonna know a human was here, but that's not the point. The point is, is you wanna make this nice location that three or four days from now, that it's all my scent's gone, and then what's left is nothing but things that the deer want. So don't worry about wearing gloves, don't worry about any of that stuff. Now come deer season, I always wear rubber boots. Um, but during, you know, summertime or like this, I don't really care. So again, I know you guys were stressing out. Why is he touching everything? Doesn't matter. I guarantee you I'll have a deer in this spot literally probably within five or six hours. So don't stress out about it. Don't worry. 
it'll be okay. So there you guys have it. That is how you make a perfect mock scrape to get the most from your setup and the most from your bottle. So I hope that, that you guys have enormous amounts of success with this. I know my grandpa has been testing this product for 40 plus years, and I am so pumped to be able to bring it to you. So it's part of our legacy here with the Bomars, and for us to be able to share a family secret with you is a dream come true. So I hope you enjoy.